seeing that? Yes, I see it. Okay, great. Um, just like Amy said, we are recording this particular webinar, which is now going to make me really nervous when I'm speaking because I'm sure I say a lot of ums and other fillers. So I apologize if I stumble a little bit. But just also to let you all know, I'll be writing a blog post about authorities and there is some other information that I can also provide uh, in a written form which was just too much to put into a, um, a spreadsheet or to a PowerPoint presentation like this. I didn't want to overwhelm everybody with reading a lot of words on the screen so expect a follow-up um, blog post that will have a lot of the written information that we'll talk about today. So this is a really short um, PowerPoint presentation about authority records in COHA kind of goes over sort of the highlights. So if you're not familiar with authority records, this is um, kind of a good introduction. If you're already familiar with them, kind of bear with me. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. And then we can open up the floor to questions because I'm sure a lot of y'all that are using authority records um, or want to start using authority records are going to have a lot of questions on, on how to do that in COHA and what do some of these things mean and, and how do they interact. So Let's go ahead and uh, get started with authority records here. Okay. Well, if I could figure out how to change the page, we would do that. Let's see here. There we go. So what is an authority record? All right. So an authority record is very simply an authorized form of usually either a name or a subject. So those names that are listed here, um, some examples, the personal names, corporate names, meeting names, uniform titles, um, the, the classic example of authority records that's usually given in, in, you know, cataloging 101 in library school is going to be Mark Twain, who's also known as Samuel Clemens. Um, other examples would be um, alternate spellings of names, and so if you wanted to standardize how you're cataloging for a particular author, that's really mainly why authority records would be used. Um, same thing for corporate names, um, meeting names, etc. It sort of standardizes your author information. Same thing with subjects. We've got topical terms, geographic names, genres, chronological terms, um, all of these. If you've done any sort of cataloging in the 6XX tags, you're familiar with, with those. And these uh, relate to essentially the Library of Congress subject headings that we're all familiar with. So the number one question I get asked a lot of times about authority records um, is how do I get them? Okay, so um, the simplest answer to that is, well, you can import them. Well, that assumes you already have them. So if you do have a set of authority records, or if you've downloaded a set of authority records, or if you've received a set of authority records from a vendor who's perhaps taken a look at your bibliographic data and said, oh, you need authority records for all of these um, topics and names, um, they've provided these authority records to you. And they are MARC records, authority records. So you can Im import those, just like you would import bibliographic MARC records. And I've taken a little snapshot of the screen here that you can see over on the right, which is how you would uh, specify that you're importing authority records. You simply choose the file, you upload it, and where it says record type, you would select authority instead of bibliographic. Um, a lot of the um, steps are the same. You can even match authority records, and we can talk about that a little bit later since that's a little bit more advanced. But that's how you would get authority records into your system. That's one of the ways, and it's a great way to get a lot of records in there quickly. The second most common way is probably to create them when you're cataloging. Uh, when you get to an authority controlled field, let's just say the 100 tag and you, you're using authority records, uh, you could say, uh, I'm going to look for an authority record and if I don't have one, I'm going to create an authority record. Um, so you can create them manually or you can import authority records via Z3950. All right, and the third way is to let Koha create them. Um, this is probably the least preferred way for most uh, libraries that use authority records, but Koha can create authority records for you. These are machine-generated authority records, and I have an example that I'll show you a little bit later um, in this presentation on what that means. Machine-generated is going to have very minimal information. It's essentially just going to have the term that you're trying to control um, or normalize, so it's the author or the meeting or the subject heading. It's not going to have a lot of other information in there about that. Um, it's not going to have a C also. It's not going to have any other reference information in there. It will simply be a small record, kind of like a, I call them stub records, and it will have a tag in there that specifies that it is a machine-generated record that was created. Okay, so once you've gotten authority records, that was kind of a leap, right? So we jump right over into now we have authority records. Um, what, do, what do we do with them? 
Uh, there are some system preferences within Koha that are going to impact how your authorities behave or how you create authority records um, when you're cataloging in, in the system. So there are three main ones that affect your authority records. The first one is the auto-create authorities. Um, so any of y'all who have access to the system preferences can, can go check and see how you have your system set up for authority records. So auto-create authorities has two options, generate or don't generate. Um, what this one will do is allow Koha to create those machine-generated authority records. Um, this system preference, as it says here, works hand-in-hand -hand with the Biblio Ads authorities. Um, if you don't have the Biblio Ads authority set to allow, this system preference won't have any effect. So you have to have the system set up to allow editing the bib to create an authority record for this auto create to generate an, an authority record. Um, so that one's a yes or no, but it does have some interplay with the Biblio ads authority. Um, the Biblio ads authority again has two options, which is allow or don't allow. And so as it, you can read the screen here, so when you set it to allow, when you catalog, you don't have to select an existing authority record, and you have the option to create a, to a new authority record. You can search for an authority record, or you can just enter free text in the authority-driven tag. Um, with don't allow means you have to select an existing authority record. You don't give your catalogers the option to create an, a new authority record. And so that's kind of more restrictive. Um, we're only going to be adding the authority records that we like, and catalogers have to select one of those. Okay. The third one that affects the way that your authority records work here is the don't merge. And this is a do or don't. This has always been kind of a funny system preference to me. Um, because if you set this to don't, um, there is a cron job we can run that will do it for you. Um, I don't understand why people wouldn't set this to do, although I'm sure there probably are people who prefer to have this set to don't and then run the cron job. Um, or you could have it set to don't and not run the cron job so they would never merge. So to kind of explain what the merge means, this is where we're talking about when you edit an authority record, that that change then trickles down to that bib record. So let's just say we go in and um, George R. R. Martin, we have an authority record for him, and we've got all of his Game of Thrones books and you know the DVD series for the the movies and, or the TV show. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, he, he's let's just say he's passed away. And when we go and edit that authority record, that change when we put in his, his information on, on a death date, if that's in a field that displays, that's going to trickle down to those bib records and update those bib records with the information. Or let's just say he's decided to um, say what the RR stands for, and he, those are part of his name, so it's the long version. Um, if you were to change that to George, you know, name, name, uh, Martin, those, those names that you've added are going to show up in that bibliographic record in the 100 tag. So changes you make to authority records can trickle down to your bibliographic records and update those authority-driven tags if they're tied together. Okay, So that's kind of a nice feature. If you're updating your authority records, you don't have to then go update 50 bibliographic records. You change it once. Wherever it's linked together, it's going to update your bibliographic record. All right, so you just heard me talk about linking, right? So that's kind of the other big piece of this puzzle. So how do we link these authorities and bibliographic records together? Um, and the most common way to do that is to just do that at the time of cataloging. So for example, if your catalogers are selecting existing authority records when they're cataloging, they catalog a title, they would select an existing authority record when they select that record, it is automatically linked to that bibliographic record. So there's a, there's a link that, and I'll show you what that looks like, but this, that link is made at, at that particular time, okay? Um, that's probably the most, um, the most common way that, uh, that these authority records and bib records are linked together. It's probably also the way that has the tightest level of control over that. You're controlling when that information and what information gets linked together. There is another way to link your bibliographic records and authority records, and that's through a cron job. Those cron jobs are um, system processes that run nightly and usually in batch and kind of resource intensive. And so this would be one of those where it's going to go look at all of your bib records and all of the, the tags that are specified as um, authority controlled tags. And then it's going to go see if it finds a match in the authority records. 
And if it finds a match in the authority records, um, it may or may not link it depending on the settings. And again, there are some system preferences here that we'll look at. But just understand that cron job can link those bibs for you to the authorities automatically. Um, and we usually will run that uh, weekly. We can run it nightly depending on the size of your collection. Um, it, size usually doesn't matter in this particular case because it's only going to be looking at a small subset of unlinked bibs um, to go find new bibs to go link them to. All right, so the system preferences. Okay, so we talked about the system preferences that run authorities just in general. So kind of keeping those in mind that you can cre auto create authorities and whether or not editing your bib will cr allow you to, to create um, authority records. These particular system preferences, which are located next to those authority system preferences, are the system preferences that directly control how that linker process works. Um, and these are, I think they're, if this is exactly what the screen looks like. It's a small snapshot of a, a section of that screen. But if you go to look under authorities, you'll see the linker. Uh, and these are the four most important system preferences. So I thought I'd kind of go over these four um, in a little bit of detail for you. So the first one is the linker keeping stale. So what this does is it either does or does not, so that's the option, do or do not. I always feel like I sound like Yoda a little bit here. You know, there is no try, only do. Um, but so do or do not, we're going to keep existing links to authority records where there is no match. So let's just say you've got a link to an authority record or you have a link to this, this concept, this subject heading, but somehow you've, you've deleted that authority record. You don't have an authority record for it anymore, but you already have it linked previously to an authority record, but yet that authority record is now gone. Um, and what this does, or that authority record has changed, okay, and you don't have the merge set up, right? So you, now we're linked to George R. R. Martin, um, but now the authority record says George Reynolds R. Martin, for example. Um, that doesn't match, right? They're, they're completely different strings that it's trying to match. When you have it set to to do not, it's going to say, oh, this doesn't match that, it, it, this isn't that authority record. I'm going to remove that link because we don't actually have an authority record now for George R. R. Martin. We have an authority record for George Reynolds R. Martin. Uh, so there's, there's no link, there's no matching authority record. We're not gonna have a link. I'm going to remove that link. Um, if you have it set to do keep existing links, it would say, oh, I'm gonna keep this link to George Reynolds R. Martin, although my string says George R. R. Martin, I'm going to keep it because that's more important for me to know that those are the same and that they're related. Okay, so that's, that's the kind of the high level do or do not. Are you going to keep a link to an authority record if that authority record essentially no longer matches and there is no other authority record that matches? Okay. The, the next system preference that we have here is linker module, and this one should always be default. Default's just the best way to run this. I think the two options here are first match and last match. It does, does exactly as you would expect. It's going to go troll through the authority records and say, here's the first one I found, or here's the last one I found. Um, default is just the, the best way to run this. Linker options, there are none. So this should always be plank. Um, this linker option system preference was put in place with the intention that it would be possible to create different ways to link your authority records. Um, nobody has yet written any processes to link authority records in a different way. So this is the standard, it should be in here. Um, linker relink. is what's going to tell the system that if I have an authority record that's already linked, I'm either going to relink it or I'm, or I'm gonna do not, which is I'm not going to relink it. So you can think about this particular system preference um, working in concert with the first one, linker keep stale. So you, you have to kind of think a little bit like, well, if I set this one to do and that one to do not, um, you know, I can kind of help you know, individuals kind of work through that process, but they do work hand in hand. So if we say, let's, let's, let's do not relink headings that have been previously linked, okay? The linker keep stale it doesn't really come into play there because it's never going to look at that authority record or that 
authority driven tag if it's already linked because we're going to say don't don't look at this this tag if it's already linked skip it or if we have it set to do we are going to take a look at every single tag and say, okay, I'm going to look at this tag. I'm going to make sure that link is still valid. And depending on what the linker keep stale version is um, or value, I may or may not relink it to a, to a new authority record. So those two go hand in hand. Um, if you're going to look at them or not look at them, and then if you're going to update them or not update them. The next thing I, I um, always get asked on authority records is, is what links to what. And this is just sort of um, a bunch of numbers that, that, that may not look like a whole lot, but what it does describe, and I will put this into the blog post and also this uh, particular presentation will be available um, either recorded or as a link as well um, up on our website. But these list the mark tags that are found in the bibliographic records. And then on the right side of that arrow is the type of authority record that it will be linked to. So anything that's found in the 100, the 600, the 700, and the 800, and those would all be personal names, are going to go and match to an authority record that has a 100 tag, which would denote that's the authority record for a personal name. 110, 610, 710 to the 110. Um, and this is where I start getting a little bit fuzzy, but one of those is meeting names, and I think 111 is, is something else. Uh, anyways, you could look up the specifics on what those are as far as um, the, type of, the type of information that's stored in there. But authority tags all have a very specific format that denotes what kind of authority record it is, and we'll look at an example just now. Um, and, and it will have either a 100, a 110, 111, 130, 148, 150, 151, or 155. It won't have two, it'll just have one of those. Um, and depending on what it is, will control what kind of tag it will link to in your bibliographic record. A 155 tag in an authority record is always going to be looking to link to a 655. Never a 651, always a 655. So there's a very definite structure here for how we look at what in the bibliographic record is looking at what in the, in the authority record. Oh, and just in case anybody was going to ask about series information, the 440 links to um, series authority records. And I've seen these link to things um, and this is, would be something that's coded into the, um, the way the linker works. And I believe I've seen it linked to uniform title, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And what does the linking look like? And this is going to be in where we see those example records. So this, for those of y'all who have never seen an, a basic authority record, is an example of, of a stripped down. I think I've taken out a couple of fields just to make sure it fit onto the, uh, onto the screen here. This is a basic authority record. You can see it's got a similar structure to a bibliographic record with a leader, an 001, et cetera, et cetera. You'll notice in here, we've got a 150 tag. Okay, so that 150 tag is what's denoting that this is a topical term um, or a subject heading, right? And this is dogmatism. And this is going to link to any 650 tags that have dogmatism in that, in that structure. Um, in that 667 tag you see here, you'll see machine generated authority record. That's how we can identify that this was created by the system. Um, I don't believe that this is one that was actually created by Koha. This is probably one that was created by a legacy system and then sent over to us to import for a site. Um, Kohas look very similar, though. They will say machine generated authority record. The only reason I say that is um, in, in looking at some of these other tags, that would be information that was probably generated elsewhere. Okay, this uh, next example is a, um, a very, very, very stripped down bibliographic record. And the reason that it's stripped down so much again is just to be able to fit it onto the screen, but you would expect to see 20 tags in here for ISBNs, maybe even some 264, 260 tags, um, probably a lot more 650 tags. They're more missing a 100 or a 1XX tag for authors. But again, this is just to show you an example of what the, the linking looks like. So when we look at this particular bibliographic record, in that 650 tag, again, we've got this A subfield with the term dogmatism, okay? And that, if we look back at this basic authority record, we see this 150 tag here with also the subfield A with dogmatism, okay? You'll notice here as well that in that 650 tag in this bibliographic record, we have a subfield nine. That subfield nine is reserved by Koha, and I think most systems, to designate 
the link. This is where that link is stored. And what we have here is, is just a large number, 528667. And that's the link to the authority records number. Okay. Oops. Yeah. So on this authority record, you'll see in, in, in this record, it scores that unique identifier in the 001 tag up at the top. So you see that 001 control number 528667 which is exactly right here, what we find in the subfield line, 528667. So that's how Koha makes those links. It's how it stores those links. It's how it generates searches uh, based on those, those authority uh, tags. It, it knows these, all, these things are all connected because they all have this value. Joy, um, if you don't mind, can we just pause for a moment here? Yeah. Okay, great. So we got a couple of questions and comments in the chat. And... I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, there was some discussion of the 440 uh, being uh, obsolete and being used now the 490 and still having some 440 if you are doing um, AACR2 mm -hmm. and how it should be handled. And there's a few other questions. So um, just wanted to try to get those in now. Yeah, the, the, we typically move these 440s and these 490s, I think it's to the 830, um, and I'm sure that this is an older record that was cataloged, and it's AACRCR2, absolutely. Um, I would have to take a look at uh, some of the, the newer um, newer cataloged records if with those 830s to see how they're being linked, um, and I'd be happy to, to kind of run a test on that. This was just a record that I ran across, and when the linker was written, it was, um, we were primarily still in the AACR2 world, and so it does not surprise me that it may just be looking at the 440s. Um, so that's definitely something I can look into. In fact, I'll put that in the blog post. That'll give you guys something to look forward to. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they, they want to know um, a, how a 440 should be handled if they do come across it and it's, you know, really now a 490. Um, yeah. And then I have one other question posted. Uh, will COHA include punctuation in the 1XX field? Um, all right, I would need some clarification on that. So will COHA, when it's, are we talking about when it's creating those um, authority records, those machine generated authority records, or are we talking about when it's matching up? Okay, so Jane, maybe you can just elaborate on that question about the punctuation in the 1XX field. And let me look down and see if you can follow that up with some more info on your question. And then there's some sharing about the 440 and the 800 and the 830. That's great, thank you. And so Jane, let me know if you have um, some more detail on your question. Right, because I can tell you from the matching, the one of the areas that will will trip up um, is some places is is punctuation because if there is a comma over here in your bibliographic record and that comma does not exist in your authority record, those will not match. Okay, because that's just the computer's not smart enough to know that that comma doesn't matter. It just sees that it's a character and that character doesn't exist over here. Um, no match. Okay, so when we're looking at matching everything matters there it has to be exact um, but as far as when it's creating those machine generated records uh, because they're machine generated um, and again because this is not one that was generated by Koha itself although I would suspect Koha would act very similar it probably puts a period at the end of things um, but chances are when it's machine generating these authority records it's pulling exactly what's in that bibliographic subfield and just creating a mark authority record with exactly what that string was here. So you may see some anomalies just because it's 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 just not editing what you put in. It's it's simply taking what you've provided and creating an authority record with that exact string. Okay, so I think you have addressed it. Jane said the authority okay. record for dogmatism included a period. Will the yeah. co-op generated authorities include punctuation? Um, only, and you can see here clearly that this um, bibliographic record did include a period, so chances are that because that had a period, that's why that authority record has a period. It's only going to, to simply take what you've provided and, and put that into that um, authority record. 
Okay, great. I think so your authority, in, with machine generated authority records, why they're the least preferable is because it's de completely dependent upon the quality of your cataloging. Um, so if you have a strong faith in your catalogers, creating machine generated authority records is a great way to go. Um, if perhaps they're, you know, you're not so sure, it would not be an area where you would want um, to have Koha create those. Excellent. Okay. And that's actually the end of my presentation. I threw this picture in here because it makes me laugh every time I look at it. Um, and I don't ever have a reason to use this picture. So um, that, that's it. Um, so I, at this point, if there are any other questions, uh, I know one of the areas we did not talk about was matching authority records. And I think there probably are some uh, libraries that have some questions about how to match authority records. Um, and the way that you match authority records within Koha is very much the same way that you would match bibliographic records. You set up a matching rule. And at the moment, I believe there are probably, I think we may be limited just to two tags um, where matching is really effective here. And that would be that um, control number that's in the 001, because that's going to be consistent. But that's like matching on your Biblio number and when you're doing bibliographic imports. And that's only if you have taken out your authority records, you've manipulated them, and now you're putting them back in, um, which is what we do sometimes with bibliographic records. If you do that with your authority records, pull them out, manipulate them, and push them back in, um, that would work. The other way that we are able to match right now is on that 10 tag in the authority records. Let me see if my example had one. This example does not even have one because it was machine generated. Um, but the 10 tag is where that um, LCC number is stored and that's you know kind of like the most common number that we can match on so especially if you if you're having authority records that are generated by a vendor chances are they're coming to us with an 010 um, field in there that we can match your existing records and overlay okay um so we got some more chatting joy can you see the chat or not i'm sorry no i i can't see it because i'm sharing my screen. Okay, not a problem at all. Um, I just didn't want to read things that you could read for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see here. What do we have? We have uh, looking for seeing a match example, but Heather Hernandez or Heather, yeah, Heather Hernandez said she'll look for a match example with terminal punctuation. Um, during the screen showing the linker options, our instance has a system preference called catalog module relink. Does that affect anything? Catalog, let me look. I'd have to look at that one to see what that is. This is one that was taken off of um, a system that was running 322X, like 322.7, 322.8. Um, so I'd have to look up if that's an older um, terminology in this. Okay, catalog module relink preference. Okay. Um, I've noticed that when an authority record is updated, the resulting linked bib fields will lack final punctuation. Closing dates for authors does this. Can you read that one again? I've noticed that when an authority record is updated, the resulting linked bib fields will lack final punctuation. Closing dates for authors does this. Okay, so uh, I'm not, uh, those might be two different things with the, the punctuation. Again, we're looking at it's only able to to put over into your bib record if you've got that merge set where you're updating your uh, bibliographic records. It's only going to be taking and putting there kind of what it's found in the authority record to update it. Um, and I'm kind of wondering if the dates is the same thing, but that's something I'd, I could look at in a specific example if they had one on that. Okay. And this also says, is it a matter of punctuation to explain why authority records don't link to records with subdivisions? For example, our authority record of 110-2 Queen Mary Steamship doesn't link to the bib with the heading 610-20 Queen Mary Steamship pictorial works. You may have to read that. Um, can you paste that into, yeah. into the chat? I'll take a look at that. Yeah, I think that sounded like two different strings to me. <laughs> it needs to be seen. Yeah, take a look at that. Okay. Okay, right. So here we are. We're looking for, um, we're finding a value of Queen Mary Steamship's 
basically here now work with me with Queen Mary Steamship Space Pictorial Works, and it does not sound like your authority record lists that subdivision that um, of pictorial works in the authority record, and that would be why it's not linking because it's not an, um, an exact match for that entire string that's found in that 610. There's some, some discussion of where people get their authority records, mentioning um, Mark and OCLC. And then we have a description of what the catalog module relink says, which is do or do not automatically relink headings that have previously been linked when saving records in the cataloging module. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's one that I just didn't take a picture of to show here. What's that, is that under the authority section or is that under the, um, are they seeing that under authorities or under the linker? Yeah, where is that? Let's see. Under the linker options. Under the linker options. No. Under authorities linker. And I'm what, gonna, version, what version are they on? Um, this is Marywood, so... 322. There it is. Yeah, automatically relink headings that have been previously linked uh, when saving records. So this one can be a little bit can be a little bit dangerous um, in the sense that what what this one particularly controls is when you are editing a bibliographic record, Koha will at that moment when you open and then close it when you save it will go in and, and sort of run through your, your authority tags and say, does this one still match? Does this one still match? So it's going to relink based um, on that initial opening and closing of that particular bibliographic record. Um, this is sometimes not what you want to do, especially if you have a cataloger who's just going into, let's just say, you know, correct, um, you know, oh, I forgot to put the subfield in, you know, or I'm going to go back and do some cleanup on records. That act of opening and closing is what is going to be um, kind of kicking off this possible relink. Okay, so you can see that I think in my test system, I probably had a system preference turned off, which is probably why it didn't show up in here. Um, but that one is, that is a standard, um, system preference for that linker. Um, and we and occasionally, just I'll throw it out there, we do run some scripts for sites um, that are doing some cleanup where we go in and we open and close every single bibliographic record that lives on that in that catalog. And the process of doing that would relink your headings as well. So um, that, that one, it, it's not a bad one to have, um, but it, it can have unintended consequences um, because it's simply run by the virtue of opening and closing and saving a bibliographic record for any reason. Okay, and I put a little more info in IRC about the steamship one. Okay. Yeah, is this one from Heather? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> how did I know that, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is one um, that Uh, ideally, there should be a way for the um, for the linker to work on sort of greater or lesser headings, and that's not something I believe that is is functional at the moment. It wasn't the last time that I looked at that, um, and that would be what would fall under that linker option um, that you can see here on my screen. The linker system preferences, the linker options. Um, 
that's what we would consider broader headings. And so it would look at your authority records and say, oh, I see you have a Queen Mary. Oh, I have a Queen Mary over here in the 650A and oh, in the 150A authority record. My 650A has an X, so it doesn't match. If the broader headings system was working, um, it would remove that X and say, okay, now I'm looking at a 650A Queen Mary pictorial works. Oh, now I match, so I'm going to link that up. Um, so Heather, that would be something that I would love to, to, we could try that on your system, um, but I wouldn't want to relink all of your stuff. And so that's something where we would want to sort of find a, another site to, to run some tests on that, um, if you would be interested in that. And if you liked the way that that worked, um, I'd have to go look to see if there were some outstanding issues with that broader heading um, kind of implementation for a linker option. Um, we generally advise people not to use it and just to use complete matches. But if we could get it and we could identify some of the issues with it, maybe we could get those fixed and then it would be working and that would be really nice too. Cool. I'm just going to uh, paste in a couple things from the chat for you and IRC. Okay. Yeah, this the question you just put in there was exactly what I was talking about, which is the broader headings. Okay, so that was the... Right, and I'll, I'll put a little blurb into when I read the blog post about the, um, about the broader headings. I'll also include in there the information about catalog module relink, which for some reason was missing on my particular system, um, to make sure that that's also kind of explained in there. So if people are going to be watching and then reading the blog post, they'll have all of those linker system preferences. And I'll throw a little information in there about the broader headings and how that's sort of designed to work. Um, and then put some ca caveats in there as well. Great. So that was from Jane about does COA have an option to link the authority records to the subfield A and allow subdivision headings not to be linked. So we will look for that in the blog post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Heather's excited to test an experiment yeah. that you mentioned. <laughs> So Heather, just so you know, um, I'd be happy to do this. We, I have to wait until I've got something running on my test system at the moment, but once that's kind of off, which would be sometime middle of uh, September, we can look at kind of taking a copy of your data and, and playing around with that there. And then we could also maybe, I know you're excited about the linked data, and that might be a good opportunity to include some of that work as well in there. Great. So Jane's very interested also. Okay. Good. Okay, so FYI, Wikipedia says George R. R. Martin is George Raymond Richard Martin. Yes. <laughs> it, 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 it shows you what I know. I've never seen Game of Thrones. And I barely know that that guy's name is George R. R. Martin. So I was completely guessing. Could you tell what the R stood for? Thank you for the correction. I will never forget that. It is Raymond. Um, <laughs> Should have been a cross-reference in the authority. <laughs> Um, uh, Heather says mid-September will be fine. Ooh, and link data, yes, please. <laughs> and I love doing experiments that lead to more learning about COA and or COA improvements. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't mind my um, inflection that I'm giving you, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else does anybody have? <laughs> Okay, good. Do we have anybody from Switch on? You know, I was looking. Uh, anybody from Switch here? Because that was a site, and I guess I could follow up with um, one or two other catalogers there, but this was a site who was using the broader headings, and for them, it did not work um, kind of in the way that they really wanted it to work, although um, I think, you know, for me, it looked like it was working as expected, but for them, and they being the experts and the catalogers, they were not happy with some of the, the results that came out of that. So I'd be curious to follow up with, um, with them um, as well. Yes, definitely. Uh, here we go. Our system has multiple authority records from adding libraries. How do I easily find and merge duplicate records? Um, Again, here we, we, we kind of get back to the issue when, we're, when we talk about deduping authority records, it's kind of like overlaying authority records in a way. We have to find a good match for that. Um, and so if we have a match for that, we can, we can look at merging those 
um, authority records, and that would be based on that 010 field. Um, and then I guess we would obviously then assume, have to either assume that that meant that that was correct and that the 100 tag was accurate and that these authority records were correct and accurate. Um, or we would have to be looking at let's merge based on just the 100 and then we would have to run it, uh, what, you know, eight or nine times based on 110s, 111s, 130s, um, so multiple passes over the uh, authorities database. Another way to get rid of authority records that you don't want is to just run the, the linker or make sure that you're linking your bibs to your authority records. What will happen is that everything that matches in your system will find its match and then be linked. We can go in and say, okay, anything now that's an unused authority record, anything that is not currently linked to a bibliographic authority driven tag, we want to remove that authority record. So we would remove my George Reynolds R. Martin, right? Um, and leave the George Raymond R. Um, Martin authority record. So removing unused um, authority records is probably your best bet to do that and probably the safest bet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, maybe someone is now perhaps thinking about Harry Potter, but if someone searches subjects for conjuring, will Koha find bib records for items with subjects of magic tricks, which is the correct authority? Um, let me repeat that one again. If so we're running searches. Searches for conjuring. Okay. In subjects, will Koha find bib records for items with subjects of magic tricks, which is the correct authority. Um, okay, it depends what kind of search they're running. So I'm gonna say if they're running a specific subject search um, in Koha, it, it's, it's not, unless magic tricks and, and conjuring kind of appear in that same, um, in that same authority tag, or if there's also an existing if they've got both of those subject headings listed as two individual 650 tags. Um, but if they're running a keyword search, again, it would, it would, it would return it if, it if conjuring was found and it would just be that, yes, magic tricks was also listed because it's sort of a cousin term, but it would have to be, for both of those, the term magic tricks would have to be somehow in um, proximity either in the authority record or in the bibliographic record um, for it to return those. Okay comment conjuring is a 450 C from two magic tricks in the 150 of the authority record right okay um, okay then we have a little example there um, I see a couple questions I'm going to try to gather them all but I do want to ask this question that's coming from Lee at Marywood any advice on adding authorities from the ground up our catalog hasn't used authority records on our previous ILS so now we have to start from scratch Right. So I think your two best um, options are to um, hire, get a vendor to provide you with authority records. And if that would be if you wanted really fleshed out, um, fully done authority records. Um, if you want just to know what subject headings you're working with or what names you're working with, and you just sort of want to get an overlay, you could run, you could have us run the linker script with the setting sets that you will auto create authority records. So when that, when the, um, when the linker goes through, it's going to find a bib, it's going to open the bib record, find that term, say no authority record, create the authority record, link it, save your bib. Um, and so you would get you know, uh, 900,000, depending on the size of your collection, you know, authority records kind of overnight. Um, that actually might take a little time to run, depending on the size of your collection, but that would be one way. You could get machine-generated authority records very quickly. However, they may or may not be the most accurate, um, you know, in a cataloging sense. Is there an existing report to run for unlinked authorities? That's a really good question. I know I can go and delete them um, pretty easily. So if I can delete them, I should be able to find them pretty easily. Um, whether or not there's an existing report, I don't. I'm that I'm not sure about. But if anybody has that that question, I think typically the way that I handle that is if somebody wants to remove them, I can run that um, particular um, deletion as a as a test, and it would show me what's being deleted. But um, Nick over here is saying that he ha there's a plugin that will do that. Yes. Somebody unmute. Yes. There he is. There is the um, unused authorities plugin. I don't know the exact title, but I'll paste it into the chat and give that to you, Joy, too. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. Just, plugins. Yeah. So just circling back a little bit to the conjuring, the question is, so COA will not search the 400 fields when doing bibliographic searches? Uh, no, not unless those are indexed. And I don't believe that the 450s are indexed in an authority record, just the 150s. And this sort of brings up the problem with some with um, most systems and authority records and that's those see also and those tracings um, that are very informational when you're actually looking at the record but don't necessarily provide um, links to other records or searching capabilities um, when you when you have them. Um. And I think I just felt like a couple of catalogers just, you know, like the life just died, right? I mean, it's, it's like the saddest thing about authority records um, for me. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're saying, how does it update from the C references? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I know, let's all collectively have a moment of silence. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Now, so, so Lee followed up with after running that, which I'm not sure which one he's referring to, I can just browse the authorities module and see which authorities need to be overlaid. Um, yeah, you could. There would be a lot of them. But um, yes, you would be able to go into the authorities module and just say, let's, you could start with personal name and just start with A and then it would display um, and then just one by one overlay them. Okay, right, after running the linker on your end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Authority records, basically index, authorized headings. Authority records, basically index, authorized headings, and without the ability to update to authorized headings, the authority module is pretty much useless. Um, I don't know that I would go that far, but um, there are limitations, yes, um, and that's kind of across the board with, you know, other systems as well. So, yes, uh, the authority records are not, aren't, aren't perfect. Um, you don't get the fullest extent of the potential that's held in them. However, authority records are great for standardizing um, a, the authorized values in those particular fields across your collection, um, and they do provide some um, ability for you to, you know, okay, I see Mark Twain, I've got 40 other, uh, it's used in 40 bibs, let me go see what those are. And so you can provide a list, you know, immediately, you know, here's the 40 items we have written by him. Um, the C also, is, I, I agree, but I don't know that I would call it useless. I'm just going to paste you this in the chat, uh, I mean, in the IRC, Joy, from Heather. And let me look for any other questions to scoop up. I'm, having, I'm, I'm, I'm still wrapping my head around this one. Oh, hold on. Yep. And Jenny from Switch is here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jenny. It's okay, we recorded it. You can watch it. <laughs> Right. So you're, yeah, she's talking about linking to the, to the, the 650s. Right. Yes, that will happen. That, that's run by that, that, that don't merge the, the, or the, the do don't merge um, functionality. Right. Um, I, I guess I was talking about something a little bit different um, in that. Okay. If um, Jenny, can you unmute Jenny for me? Yes. One second. Let me unmute Jenny if she can't do that. Let me see. Oh, I'm just looking for you, Jenny. Here you are. Hi, Jenny. Can you hear me? Hi, Jenny. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry. Ah, we were. We have a brand new person who started, and uh, I was uh, thinking 1 p.m. My apologies. Um, That's okay. PM Central Time. So I'm just logging in now, and I didn't want to miss this. So um, you are. I'm seeing you're going over the preferences. Uh, right. What, to what? Yeah. So um, this is actually stuff that um, 
we're, we've, I've actually kind of backtracked a little bit in it. So we've actually gone through the whole thing, but just so you know that the presentation and I'll write a blog post that will be up on, on our website and there is a recording so you can watch it all in its entirety um, a little bit later. But what, one of the questions that, that came up was about, uh, and it, you can actually see on this screen, is one of the linker options, which is the broader headings. And I know uh, you were one of the few sites where I've actually run that linker option of broader headings. And remember, it was going then and looking at simply just that first subfield in that authority tag and not looking at those subfields followed after it. And there was a reason that you all didn't like that. Um, well, we, um, we wanted it to link on the subdivisions. I think we were under the impression that it wasn't really working. So we went to the broader because, um, at least it would sync up in the OPAC with the correct number of titles. And we mm -hmm. like that when we tried to do it, um, I'll just use the example of, you know, uh, Asia, you know, and then uh, maybe a time frame. You know, we would only, even with those subdivisions, we would only be able, the, the, the patron in the OPEC would only be able to bring up the um, broad Asia, which would give you, you know, so many uh, titles. So we just decided to go with uh, syncing or, or linking to the broader heading so that it was accurate. Isn't that what other people are experiencing? But, but the changes that we did make, Joy, on the preferences have been improved because right. now when they click on, and, and if you want to bring up a, a OPAC example, now when they click on the subdivision, when there are subdivisions, I mean the subject heading when there are subdivisions, it does seem to work better. Right, and I think you're, uh, we, we had that a little bit um, backwards just to clarify. The broader headings is actually where it goes um, a lot more vague. So when you're looking at Asia in you know, a time period, um, with the broader headings, if it didn't find that Asia time period, it went it just linked to Asia. So that's sort of the downside to working with those broader headings is that you end up with, as you described, somebody doing a search and then just getting overwhelmed with how results when it, um, because you lack very specific authority records. But I will say that I think that was the only option. Well, we're now running your system on sort of the default, which is an exact match. Um, and I think that's what you're finding is a lot better because the searches uh, in those those authority records are more granular. Oh, yes, you're right. right. You're so right. And I, I think that that's why we recommend to people, you know, let's, you know, don't use the, the broader headings. We'll just stick with the default, which is going to be an exact match. Um, and that's why, Heather, I say, you know, look, we should want to, we want to test this on your system before you decide that this is something that you really want to do. Um, because going to those broader headings, um, the way that it should work is that it should take, if you have a, a subject heading in there with 10 subdivisions, if it doesn't find a match for that A and then those nine subdivisions should just start knocking off that last subdivision one at a time until it finds a match. And, and if it works that way, uh, that would be ideal because then you would say, okay, it matches Queen Mary, it doesn't match the Queen Mary pictorial works um, and you would still get a, a, a valid link. So that's something um, I think partly comes down to preference. Um, you know, you, you can, if you don't have a lot of authority records, tend to overwhelm your patrons with very generic headings. The big thing that uh, I would just interject is, you know, we really didn't know when we migrated what we were doing with our system preferences, you know, for people coming, just coming on to Koha, maybe explaining what these preferences really do versus what you have, you know, what your authorities look like. Mm -hmm. And then what else kind of confounded us is, you know, thinking a little bit harder about actually how our patrons behave too. When you're in the OPAC, when they see a subject heading or an author, they wanted to do thus. And do, does that behavior match the preferences and how we have them set up? Because set set up because in our case they did not, and and then, you know that that was it's still a little confusing. But maybe that's just the nature of this area of Koha and, and really authorities in general. Um, I would agree, and I think those are really great points. And one of the things that we've started doing with sites that are migrating is actually linking their authority records at the time of migration, which is not something we had done in the past. And I think it gives people a, an idea then to see, and you see firsthand how these things are linking up and, and how um, those systems 
allows people to ask a lot more um, detailed questions to get the things um, set up the way that they want. So, now you have so much going on with migration and you're thinking really in terms of s circulation and, and, you know, more on that end of the public, uh, you know, the public interaction with the system, you know, circ, circ preferences are, I, come to mind, mm -hmm. but we just, this wasn't at the forefront of, front of our brain at all. Right. And, Okay. And the thing with the authority records, too, is that um, it's depending on your um, attachment to your authority records or the links, um, we do have the ability to go in and just say, wipe out all of the links, and we're going to relink it, which I think is what we did on your system, Jenny. So like, go wipe them out. We're just going to start fresh and start linking from scratch. Um, we're going to change the system preferences and, and then relink them that way. And that worked well because you weren't attached. You didn't have the situation where you wanted links to authority records that didn't exist anymore or links to authority records that didn't match. Um, and so if you don't have that issue that you need to maintain this kind of um, arcane maybe set of links, we can wipe them out, relink them. So, but we did have a question here from, from Peggy about a bunch of big records with varied spellings for an author and how can you find them and link them to an authority record? Um, well, I guess therein lies the rub. Um, it's, it's a matter of finding them, right? So, um, Let me see that question. It, it, this is an issue of, of how inconsistent are the inconsistencies because you could run queries if it was just a slight misspelling in the middle of a word. You could say, all right, go find um, like J.K. Rowling. Maybe they've spelled that. Um, you know, for some reason, the last name got spelled with two L's. You know, go find all of these um, records with this, um, with J.K.R. and then maybe ending in an ing i mean there's some there are some sqls that you know statements that you could probably write that would at the report level it would help you narrow it down but to be very specific to those individual authors you would have to run them author at a time to kind of get to them which may not be the most efficient um, and then you would have some options to either download those bibs make your corrections and upload them um, or go in and edit them one at a time and link them to the, the correct um, authority record but if you download them and then upload them as corrected records, if you're running the linker script, it would then take care of that linking for you um, at night. So um, I don't want to ignore Heather. Um, I know she's put in some um, information in here about those 450 texts. So what I'm going to do um, a little bit later is um, go take a look at some of these examples that she's put in there, and I'll flesh out the blog post with a little bit of information on what kind of behavior she's seeing um, from that. So you all will have that. I don't want you to think I'm ignoring that. We'll, I'll be taking a look at that, and we'll be uh, making sure that that information gets um, put out there. And, and if there's some explanations of, on what exactly is going on, I want to make sure that all of y'all will get that and that it's available. Great. That's great. Um, was there a discussion about what reports libraries have set up to help work with authorities? That's a really good question. I don't have, um, if other libraries are using reports with their authority records, I'd be curious to know. It's it's not an area where I think we probably write a lot of reports. Um, Nick, you probably, have you written any reports for authority records? And he must be muted. Um, I've written a few. It's been a little while, but it can you, can, you can get some of the information. You can't always do everything that's asked, but we can at least like retrieve authorities and do that basic part. Right. Okay, and there's some discussion about sharing authority reports and Heather's pointing to one on the wiki and mm -hmm. they're discussing what that one does. So okay. Otherwise, I think we've pretty much gathered up all this, you know, more specific questions and um, we're about two minutes away from the top of the hour. So I know this couldn't possibly answer every question about authorities, but <laughs> but thank you so much for what you've been able to talk about today, Joy. Oh, my pleasure. Um, okay, and and like I said, expect to hear within the next day or so um, a blog post um, up on the website. Well, thank you, everyone, and the webinar will be ending in a moment. Sorry if we didn't get to every single thing that you might have typed in the chat. But like I said, and Joy said, there will be a follow up and this was recorded so you can watch this again or share with your staff. So thanks. Um, uh, maybe enough interest for authorities part two. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to, 
<laughs> I'll have to talk Joy and, and see if she if she was willing to do authorities part two. Um, so I know it's a big area. So thank you everyone. Have a great rest of the day and we will talk to you soon. Thank you.